Moving on from here, I would like to use a word which is usually seen in a negative connotation in our life, and that is failure. Usually it is associated with a feeling where we all feel it's negatively used and it's wrong. But when I decided to move on from my clinical practice and coming from a middle class background where you are raised to be a doctor or an engineer being a millennial generation, it was a tough call to make. The bigger question was, if not dentistry, then what is it I want to do? That question's answer doesn't come easy to any of us. When I was trying to find my answer in that journey, I came across people who helped me understand the only way to find the answer to a question is take the journey to find the answer. By repeating the question in your head, you will never sort out the answer for that. The only way of learning is by doing it. When I decided to do that, my current work came into picture for me. The journey started two years back of publishing this research paper where we were developing a solution, AI-based model for the, based on photographic images taken just from a smartphone to be able to detect OPMDs and oral cancer. Why we chose to do so was when we did our research and background studies, we realized that today the new cases which are added each year in Indian population, 10% of it is oral cancer. And that is the most easily treatable and visible cancer to diagnose. But unfortunately, we are failing to capture it at the right time to able to make a difference in these people's lives. So when we were choosing to work on this, the decision wasn't easy. The more you dive in the public health space, the more you realize the magnanimity of the problem, how humongous the problem is. It's not easy to solve a problem which is at that large scale. So while doing that, we iteratively failed. We failed at the ideation stage. Then we realized we have to change our perspective, look at the problem from a different angle. And the importance here is we coming from a unilateral thought process, being medical and healthcare professionals, might not be able to solve it. That's where the collaboration work comes in. We have to understand that we have to expand our horizons. By looking at the problem in your head, you definitely will fail if you don't take that plunge to dive into the ocean and assess the depth. You have no clue what is the power of your brain until you start working on the ocean of ideas. Unless you don't do, you will never know whether you failed or you succeeded. In your head, you might have already failed. Might as well try. What would be the worst case scenario? Because you have already made peace with that idea in your head that you will fail. But rather than that, when you do, it a, do that plunge in an experimental way where you are making a decision methodology which is very scientific in its approach, over a period of time, you learn to use it to make decisions in your life as well. It doesn't just surmount to your professional life decisions. When we were making decisions on this project, when the data started flowing in, we had a hypothesis which didn't prove as is on the data. Now we had to go back to our storyboarding, where it was, how to look at data, how to make sense of those patterns. We failed as a team multiple times, but the reason we continued was the passion behind it, because we all were the people who had figured out one thing, that we enjoyed the joy of creation. To be able to solve something which has a much larger impact. Imagine today, the biggest problem of healthcare in India is the specialists are very less in number. The, com the complete coverage of the population by the general practitioner amounts from one, to five, one is to 500 to one is to 1,000, depending on the different geographies. How do you solve this problem? You can't expand the manpower. How would you expand that? That's a very capex heavy job. So that's where we all realized when you start looking differently at a problem, you find the solution for it. The solution lies in we have to expand as individuals our thought process, to be open to new ideas, and to collaborate with people in cross-functional domains. Solving this problem, where what we are trying to do is we're trying to triage the population. The screening is as simple as our image click 
from your mobile. We can deploy this to any frontline healthcare workers, through ASHA workers, through even a layman person, where you just have to take a click and you know, is there any further examination required? So it is called the funneling approach, where we are trying to narrow down the numbers to be able to be seen by a specialist. And mind you, the conversion rates from OPMDs to oral cancer is a significant bucket where we can make a huge difference if we try to find those cases because most of these are habit-related lesions. So if you find a case in an earlier stage of the life cycle of the disease, you'll be able to stop the progression. And in certain cases, you would be able to do a reversal as well. How I came to this particular conclusion was, I was lucky to have found people who made me understand a concept called fail fast. Today, coming from a space where I interact day in and day out with people who are doing startups, people who are passionate about creating what they want to create, they taught me one thing, that you have to have a passion strong enough where you don't get stopped by any failure. You will fail, you will iteratively fail. Unless you don't fail, you don't succeed. So you have to fail to be able to make a product or a solution for that matter, which is usable, which will make an impact on people's life. In one go, if you get perfection, that means you are nature or God. We all are supposed to be the curators of our art. We have to repeatedly, repeatedly do the same thing. Even if you're a surgeon, you will not know the surgery in the one go. You would have mastered it over years and years and years. So here, because the time and the space is moving very fast today, when we look at technology space, we do not have any longer the time space of five to 10 years to be able to say, hey, this works, this doesn't work. We all went through pandemic. We never imagined a vaccine can be agreed upon and delivered in, in such a short period of time. But it was because that's the need of the art. We have to learn to fail fast. And that's the only way we can pace up with the things, the dynamics entirely with the growing things and interaction of even the smaller pathogens or the zoonotic diseases coming in. The need is we have to leverage the technology and we have to move fast. We do not unfortunately have the liberty to move at a pace where, oh, we can fail slowly and we can come out of it. No, you have to make a decision tree which is very experimental in its nature and it's very scientific in its approach. You have a hypothesis, you prove it. Either you will fail or you will pass. If you have failed, you go back to your storyboarding. You understand why is it that you failed and then you understand your data. So it's the approach towards doing anything today has to be scientific. And that comes systematically in your decision-making tree when you practice it over and over. I'm sure many of us have ideas about how to solve a problem, which as a professional clinician, you guys face day in and day out. But we are not ready to take that plunge because of fear of failure. When I decided to change my career path, that was for the reason I didn't want the pain of regret to be there. So I decided to fail faster rather than having a regret later on. So I chose to experiment. And when you want to experiment, you have to be agile, you have to move fast, and you have to fail faster, and then you have to learn. The most important thing out of it is, you have to continuously oscillate between two zones, learning and performance. You cannot be continuously performing, and you think you will grow in learning, that doesn't happen. So in order to learn, you have to perform, and when you perform, you will definitely fail. Nobody is born perfectionist. You reach a level of excellence by continuously practicing it. So over and over, but if you keep on performing, you reach a burnout, where you are doing the same repetitive task without able to look at your mistakes, what you committed, which led to failure. So you have to go back to your storyboarding. You have to understand that there is an equal oscillation between learning and performing. So we all have those continuous learning programs, which usually we don't take it so seriously. And we have to understand the way of learning is not by doing the structured way thing. It's not just alone the responsibility of the educators to educate you. It's your equal responsibility to self-learn and grow. To understand 
what is working for you what is not working for you we are all very unique in our individual approaches and individual skill sets which work which may not work for us so it's you who has to take that plunge to fail to learn okay this is working for me this doesn't work for me and how it all started for me was 5 years back so i thought i'll do the conventional thing i don't want to do dentistry so i'll go and do an mba but i withdrew my admission because in retrospective when i looked i have failed each time i have made a conventional choice i took a gap year to go to my medical school but i didn't get a seat i settled in for dentistry thinking i'll excel at it academically i excelled but i realized when it will come to handling my patient i would be good in communication skill set but is my work something i enjoy the answer was no can i do the same work for over and over and over years the answer was a no for me then the bigger question of figuring out how would i do that it only happened when i started interacting with people so i withdrew my mba admission and i went and i took my first job in hyderabad and let me tell you within first month i failed in it i could only sustain one month in that job for the simple reason i didn't have the skill set to sustain my skill set was different but then i realized the only way to sustain is i have to come out of what i know i have to unlearn then i have to learn and then i have to relearn and i have to do this in a continuous cycle unless i don't do that i can never learn the skill set which i want to be my ideas and my dreams is not my professional degree it's way beyond that so the the whole the whole statement of think outside the box seemed flawed to me at that point of time because we are trained to think there is a box and you are going outside of it there is no box the thoughts and ideas are infinite there is no limit the limit between you and your realities is fear of failure if you make peace with that particular thought that it's okay to fail but did you learn if you fail without learning definitely you are not doing something right but if you fail and you beautifully summarize your learning and you take that as your foundation and you keep growing on that i'm telling you you may feel today you have not done right but when you will look back you will see cumulatively how much as a person and as a profession professional you have grown so it is very important to continue to do that when i joined i failed in that first job now i was lucky enough that life gave me another opportunity where i joined as an investment analyst imagine coming from a healthcare background and being a financial analyst the numbers made absolute no sense the hardest thing was to use an excel sheet and i miserably failed in doing that initially then over a period of time i slowly started understanding it's okay it's okay to fail the the problem was that i was trying to be a perfectionist the very first day i didn't want to fail i want to do it right but then i realized unless i don't fail and take in the feedback i would never grow so then my cycle of failure became shorter so it's like if okay if i have a task i will do it today i will fail it by tomorrow in that rather than sitting on it for one month and thinking oh i may not be able to do it that helped me really understand a space where it was important for me to align in it helped me understand how your failure is not the full stop it's a comma you have to ride the learning after that which defines your professional career path it's very important that every clinician or anybody in the healthcare space interacts with people outside of the healthcare space and work collaboratively it is very important that if we want to make a larger impact we have to interact with people who can help us amplify that there is no way me or anybody from the tech space can design a product or a solution for a healthcare space without the domain experts and domain experts are the people coming from the clinical background so even on my projects day in and day out i have to work with clinicians so there is no way we are discounting the part the knowledge so you don't have to stop being a clinician but that is not the alone definition we should you should attach to yourself you have to move out go beyond and think clinician is one part of you what is it that you can do much beyond than that what is it that you can contribute to what is the solution which makes your life easier 
you want to assess the depth of your own brain, your own creation, please take that step. At max, you will fail, which is absolutely okay because it will give you a learning which nothing else can give you. The only way to learn things is by doing it, by being hands-on it. There is no way you can assess theory without doing the practical, so please dive into that practical and understand. And I would want to close this with the thought to have an open mind, you have to be able to be creative to solve a problem and you have to understand that the thoughts are infinite, there is no box. Please be open-minded, collaborate and take that plunge to make your ideas into realities. Idea is only unique by the way it is executed by the people behind it. And thank you all for listening patiently.